Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Virginia City Council meeting. I will call this meeting to order at 4.30 p.m. Today's date is Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. Pam, would you please take the roll call? Caribou? Present. Ridley? Here. Paulson? Here. Beyondich? Here. Johnson? Here. Kelly? Here. Cuffey? Present. Would everyone please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome to everybody who's in the audience uh, this afternoon. We'll move to item uh, four on the agenda, which is the public forum. Is anybody in the audience like to address the city council? This is the time on the agenda where we have this opportunity to give uh, uh, your questions, concerns, or comments to the council at this time. Is there anybody who'd like to come forward? Please uh, come forward. Thank you. Uh, the, the button there is turned to green. And please state your name for the record. And welcome to the city council meeting, sir. My name is Greg Sandow. I'm the president of Franz and Bank and Trust. And I just thank you for the opportunity to come and uh, hopefully answer any questions you may have with what we've presented. We were a little late to the party, but hopefully what we have is, uh, is helpful enough to help you make a decision. So. Hey, thank you. And we all have uh, a, your letter, an email of, of a letter that you sent to the city council with respect to the, uh, the one of the items on the agenda this evening. So thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item five on the agenda, which is the consent agenda. Uh, the following items will be enacted by one motion unless a counselor or a citizen of the city of Virginia requests that the item be considered separately. Item 5.1 is the approval and corrections of the minutes of the regular meeting that was held on February 11th, 2020, and the special council meeting that was held on February 21st, 2020. Item 5.2, the adoption of finance resolution number 20-004, the schedule of bills. Item 5.3, approve the excluded bingo application for the Roosevelt Elementary PTSA to conduct a bingo on Tuesday, April 7th at the Miners Memorial Building. Item 5.4, approve the following travel requests. 5.41, Mel Claviter and Mike Twaddle of the Public Works Department to attend the Collection System Operators Conference, March 23rd through the 25th, 2020, in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, at a total cost of $1,381.04, a budgeted item. Item 5.42, Patrol Officer Noah Burr to attend the Street Smart Cop Training, August 17th through the 18th, 2020, in Minneapolis, at a cost of $513, also a budgeted item. Item 5.42, Three, Fire Marshal Chris Clark to attend the Minnesota chapter of the International Association of Arson Investigators Conference March 24th through the 27th, 2020 in Waite Park, Minnesota at a cost of $1,125, also a budgeted item. These are the items that are uh, on the consent agenda today and I'm looking for an approval of this consent agenda unless a, a counselor or, some, or somebody in the audience would like to pull one for further discussion. I'll move the consent agenda, Mayor. Council Bierma moves approval of the consent agenda. Is there support? Support by Councilor Biondich. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item six, appearances. We have no one scheduled to appear before the council today. Again, this will give the opportunity for anyone in the audience that likes to come up and address the council at this time. Seeing none, we'll move to item seven, which is unfinished business. We have no unfinished business this evening. Item eight, discussion items. Review the proposals from Baker Tilly Municipal Advisors, the 4M Fund, and Franson Bank for investment of bond proceeds for the Miners Memorial Center. Uh, we did discuss this at the Committee of the Home meeting, uh, and I'm gonna look for our uh, finance director, Cher Erickson, and we have with us this uh, today is Paul Steinman and uh, uh, also, we uh, have the proposal from France and Bank in 4M. So I know that you had some s significant discussion at staff level with our city administrator with respect to this. And what is your recommendation, uh, Sherry, and the reason why you're making this recommendation? We recommend going with the 4M fund. Um, 
um, we there is no fees with this, and um, we want to spread the wealth a little bit. Piccadilly has been instrumental in securing these monies, and Franson holds the monies. So we'd like to spread the wealth. We already have a account set up with 4M. So we have there's no fees. We have accounts set up with 4M, and uh, there's a uh, there's a proposed uh, Correct. Uh, re uh, return on our investments? These are all estimated. Estimated? Because we do not have a drawdown project yet. So okay. the estimated could go anywhere from um, 150000 155000 that Baker Tilly um, estimated to 4M at 211000 well, we have um, relationships with all three of these uh, fund uh, uh, advisors. Your recommendation is we go with 4M, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, we, there are two others are on the agenda today. The recommendation from our, our city staff is to go with 4M with respect to this particular project. Um, I'm looking for the council for some discussion or motion moving forward. Councilor Johnson. So 4M actually, the reason there's no fees for that, Sherry, clar please clarify, is because we are le members of the League of Minnesota Cities and that's one of the services that our, our membership dues. Correct. Uh, um, and these are netted in his estimate is the netted. Okay. Amount um, we would get. And there's limits on how much money we can make from the investment? Is that? Correct. And either one of these gentlemen here could answer those questions. Okay. That's all the questions I have right now. Okay, thank you. Any other council have any questions, comments, concerns, or recommendations? Councilor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the, where is the uh, 4M fund company located? Your packet. It should be in your packet, and I did not print that out. League of Minnesota Cities, he is down... Councilor Paulson, would you want a hard copy to take a look at? Okay, very good. Maybe I need that. I just. Sure. Go get it for you. Here. So they're located in the metro? Okay. So, um, and then when it came to um, Baker Tilly and Franzen's um, proposals, was there, uh, was there an ability to match what was put out by 4M? No. There, I, mean, I just asked the same question for each one of them. I didn't think it would be fair to show or expose 4M's estimate. Okay. Okay. Thank you. you thank, thank you, Councilor Paulson. Uh, anyone else uh, from the Council? Okay, Mr. Sandow, would you like to come forward and... Yeah, we have this on record, so thank you very much. The Franz and Banks proposal actually matches the 4M fund identically. It it's, it absolutely matches the seven-day average. That's what we pulled from. Okay. So it's, it's linked right to it. Every time the 4M fund adjusts, ours adjusts equally. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sandow. Okay. Anything? Same thing? Thank you. I've never seen a microphone I didn't like, so. a boy. Yeah, so uh, the no fee proposal, that's a great idea. Um, my kids have to eat, so I gotta charge something for it. No, so I, I mean, I had a feeling that 4M had, they, they have a specific program for investment proceeds, but I didn't know what they charged for it. Or not, but and I wouldn't get too tied up in the estimate of two hundred eleven thousand versus. I mean, because I mean, to, after today's uh, hit with treasuries and commercial paper, you know, it's not. Plus, we weren't probably working off the identical draw schedules. But the no fee piece is is tough for us to compete against. So, but happy to give you my proposal. 
happy to be here always. So always, I'm always happy to have you here too. Thank you. Okay. What is the council's uh, proposal or selection of uh, the investment firm that uh, for this project, Councilor Johnson? Um, I guess I have a little bit of frustration that that all three of these weren't present at the meeting when we discussed it um, briefly. Um, and based on based on the recommendation of city staff, I have to make a I'll make a motion that we go with the 4M um, as to both spread the wealth and because of the fees that they that are not here. Um, so I, I make a motion we go with 4M to invest the bonds so that we can get that money where it's safe. Okay, uh, motion to select 4M as the investment. Uh, uh, representative for this project, motion by Councillor Johnson uh, to move forward with forum. Is there support? Support by Councillor Barnzelli. Is there any further discussion? Councillor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I will go along with this, but I just want to say that I would rather, I mean, I want to go with our um, finance director's recommendation, so I, of course, will, you know, abide by that. But I'd like local as much as possible I don't know about Baker Tilly but you know I think that that says a lot to me as a as a local business person so if we have any opportunity in the future um, and we do have requests for proposals coming forward I think it would be advantageous to invite those to come and actually have a dialogue and discussion and to talk about the products that are being offered and, and the different options um, I just feel like I wasn't given maybe information on the different product levels or what was and, and I am sure Sherry you that's your area and that's what you've discussed but yeah thank you uh, uh, time Sherry? is running out we can only house these in the bank because of the FDIC insurance so we can't just let them sit there at Franzen yeah fully collateral yeah so there's a motion in support for the discussion just quickly not to belabor this any further but you know we have relationships with all three entities we have relationship with 4m of course uh, Paul you your company's provided us uh, s unbelievable service over over the years very good quality uh, advice and we've used your 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 company on many occasions of course France and bank being the local a bank of choice and uh, with the relationship we have with 4m I mean it's uh, for me, it's a toss-up on who you who you uh, select. All three are excellent, I'm sure, and uh, so I'm also going to follow the recommendation of our city finance director and uh, move forward with this proposal uh, as proffered for motion and support. So it has been moved and supported at the committee level, and now moved and supported at council level to uh, select 4M as the investment representative for this project. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll move uh, to item nine on the agenda, which is committee reports. Uh, the committee of the whole meeting that was held on February 18th, 2020. Item 9.1A, approve the VAHA, the Virginia Area Hockey Association lease agreement for one year commencing March 8th, 2020, contingent upon verification of the background checks executed by VAHA. It was moved and supported at uh, committee level to approve. I would make a motion to approve that lease agreement for one year. Moved by Councilor Freelieb to make a motion to approve uh, the contract with VAHA uh, lease agreement for one year. Is there support? Is there support? All support for discussion. Support by Councillor Baerbo for discussion. Further discussion, Councillor Baerbo. Any further discussion? Um, I just uh, opened it up if anybody else wanted, but. Okay, uh, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Councillor Johnson. Have we clarified the background check portion of it? Uh, Pam, I believe it's in the contract that they need to do backgrounds, is that correct? I have not talked with Brian to. Okay. 
Well, I think we're, we're approving this Vaha lease for one year commencing March 8th, contingent upon they verify that they are going to conduct background checks to be executed by Vaha. Is that correct, Councilor Johnson? Well, that's how I read it, but how do we know? How will we know on March 8th? When will we get that information? Well, if, if they don't provide it before March 8th, then this uh, is contingent upon it. If they don't provide it, then the motion is null and void and the contract lease is not, uh, not uh, authorized. I would, I, would like the, um, um, I would like this put on the agenda for that, the meeting closest to that so that we can get verification that that is happening. I'm, I, I, I don't doubt they will, but that we don't have that verification concerns. Be, I'll, I'll vote in the affirmative to approve it contingent upon, but I want to follow up on that part of it. Maybe we can contact our Brian Silber to ensure that they've made those necessary uh, uh, adjustments and uh, have uh, a commitment by Vaha to do that. Uh, Pam, did you have anything else? Thank you, Mayor. I was just going to note that I will talk to Brian tomorrow. And thank you. That it gets in there okay, before thank we sign anything. Yep, before I sign it, we'll make sure. Thank you, uh, Councilor Johnson. Uh, Pam, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 9.1B, adopt a resolution to purchase parcel number ID 90-0135-0030 from Gethsemane Lutheran Church located at 901 4th Street South with clarification on the parcels in the uh, the in your packet. It's, what is it, 39000 Five hundred dollars. Uh, so it's uh, it was moved and supported at committee level to adopt this resolution to purchase this property owned by Gethsemane Church in order to square off the parcel for the miners' uh, event and convention center construction uh, if, if in the amount of thirty nine thousand five hundred dollars. Looking for a motion, uh, Mayor. I will move the, the resolution uh, for the purchase price uh, with the. As long as the um, uh, surveys and everything are correct for what we need, because they didn't look like it on the map, but I believe they're correct now. Is that right, Pam? Yes, Brian was at the meeting last Friday and okay. went over all of that. Okay, thank you. I missed that meeting, so. And I believe No, I was there. Never mind. I was there. So it was moved. Has it been supported? Uh, it's been moved. Supported by Councilor Johnson. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 9.1C, approve the proposed job description and the newly created position for the community relations officer and, and allow the staff to move forward to post this position internally. This is through the police department. Councilor Johnson. I will move the position and the posting. Moved by Councilor Johnson to approve the, uh, the job description and post the position to create the community relations officer. Is there support? I'll support, Mayor. Support by Councilor Baerbo. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 9.1D, approve the opioid abuse project coordinator position and the job description and to post this job description internally. I'll move the opiate abuse project coordinator position and the posting internally. Moved by Councilor Johnson to approve. Is there support? I'll support, but just quick discussion. Okay, support for discussion by Councilor Freely. Further discussion, Councilor Freely. Is it my understanding that this is in fact a, a part-time position and it also is a grant funded that's coming up under D. We're under 9.1. This is D. This is D. This is with 9.1 C. We just approve that. It's this D. is D. I'm sorry. I'm 9.1 D. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah. 9.1 D. Approve this the is... opioid abuse project coordinator position and job description to post it internally. So I guess, you know, my biggest concern, like I've said before, isn't so much what we are attempting to do as who's going to be doing that. And so I'm just wondering, 
how we're proposing that internally, if it's something that would be part time and grant funded, I'm a little confused about that. Or, or is it just standard operating procedure that a position that becomes available to the city of Virginia? But this is not going to, in fact, be a city employee, I do not believe. So I'm a little concerned about how that's worded. It, uh, I think, okay, I'll, uh, uh, Cherry, go ahead and answer that. Thank you. Uh. There, um, we could go ahead and post both internally and externally, but normally when a job is created in its reference to a certain union, but this is not, and you are exactly right, this is an exempt position, so I don't know if that was intended to be internally. We would have to go externally to find this candidate. Well, okay, so I think uh, Councillor Freely's question, mine, I think maybe other councillors is, what's the recommendation? I mean, I think we're looking to approve the opioid abuse project coordinate position and job description, but where is it going to be posted? Is that your question? Well, or how is it going to be posted? Yeah, we typically, I mean, I don't know anybody that's on a part time status with the city right now that would be interested in this particular position, given it's an 18 month position as it stands with the grant. So I don't know that internally is the appropriate way to go with regard to the posting. Although that person might be available internally, I it's just I'm a little confused about what we're uh, what we're seeking to fill the position. So we had a lot of discussion about this last Tuesday. Apparently, we have don't have the clarification yet. So the the the, the posting would be internally and externally. That's what I thought. I thought that was our discussion. But if it's typical, may I, yes, please for us to. Initially, you post internally, correct? And should there not be an application for that, then it would go externally. So if this is following standard operating procedure for posting for a position, I just, I'm, my confusion is that it does not appear to be a city employee position, and it's only an 18-month position, for that matter, grant-funded. So I'm just a little confused in terms of how we're attempting to fulfill this position. And, and I think I'm looking at it's a very critical position in this area right now and in this city for that matter. Uh, I, I do have the minutes from uh, the last meeting. It was moved by Councilor Johnson and supported by Councilor Preleve to approve the op opioid abuse project coordinator position and job description and to post internally. That was the motion uh, at, at the last Tuesday's meeting. And I would be That's fine not with correct. that if it's. And that's what we're seeking to have. I mean, if, if the best person for this job happens to be somebody that's currently on staff with us and would like to have a part-time position for 18 months, that's the best person, and they're willing to do that because that job is that important, then I'm fine with that. But I don't know if that's the reality that we're facing. Sure, and then if we don't find somebody in turn, then it gets posted externally. Is that the use of the process? Okay, thank you. Uh, please continue, uh, Councillor Freelieb. Yeah, I'm making a motion that we move forward with this job posting and seek that person that's going to be most appropriate for that position. If that's going to be an internal posting, I'm all for it. It just seems a little bit out of the standard operating procedure for this type of position that's grant funded, 18 months in, in length, isn't a city employee, correct? You know, if I may give you an example, uh, it's just, it's just a, it's a parallel. Uh, the Metropolitan Airports Commission, when I was working down there, uh, they had a temporary position for security coordinator for card access systems and those kind of things. And this was the same thing. It was a grant funded program through the state of Minnesota, and it was a one year grant project. And they were looking at going outside and inside. They posted internally, there were applications. I applied, interviewed, they gave me that position for one year. Uh, they put me in that position uh, at that, that level of, of pay, and then on the completion of that position, I went back to my other job. So that, that, and, and I'm assuming that that would be the case here if we were to do it internally. And if we do it externally, the same thing, that the, when, when the grant expires, if it's not refunded or, or, or picked up in some other way, then that job would also end too. So. And the truth may be the best person for this job may be currently employed in the city of Virginia and is seeking to have that position. Oh. 
I'm, I'm all for posting it and filling it internally if that's the standard operating procedure for how we're going to do it. It isn't necessarily a city employee. Okay. Um, would you like to uh, <laughs> Mayor. Um, clarify, please? I just e text uh, Britt, and she said to do the internal posting first, and we're doing it for transparency reasons. Okay, so has there been a motion and a second? No. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Was there a, is there a second for further discussion? Is there a second for further discussion? Was that by a motion or did Councillor Freely make a motion? And I'll support it. Support by Councillor Johnson. Further discussion? Councillor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I guess I'm wondering if there is confusion um, between positions C and D. When Chief Matson was... Um, having this discussion at the personnel committee, um, it was stated that she was looking for someone external for that position, and mainly because of the qualifications and the criteria um, of that, the grant position um, that was stated. Um, but I know that when the, uh, I guess the qualification sheet came forward from Duluth, there was a pretty high bar there. But we kind of expanded that bar to include different um, fields, uh, career fields. So I'm a little concerned um, that we're missing what Chief Matson's original intention was um, for an external person to uh, to excuse me to apply for that position. So I, I guess I'm including I included with Dr., uh, Gary Friedlieb that. Um, I don't know that this needed to be posted internally from a current city or union employee since it's a grant position. Um, and what Chief Matson was asking for was pretty specific in terms of those external qualifications. She didn't feel that she had any internal interest within the de department. So I think I, I would be, I would object to posting it internally first. I would rather see it done simultaneously if possible if I could clarify I think from that meeting uh, from my perspective when the chief Madison gave that report she gave the report that this was the job description and the reason that she wanted it inclusive as the community relations officer uh, with the special assignment for the you know the community relations officer was four percent this is coming on item D so when she clarified that, when we move to the next item on the agenda, yeah, this opioid thing wasn't included in that. And so uh, to your point, Councillor Paulson, it's uh, a little confusing about whether or not this should be posted internally or not, but I am going to uh, support the recommendation from our city administrator to move forward in that regard. So uh, that be that would be what I would do. Uh, it has been moved and supported, and so I'm going to support this motion. Uh, Councillor Paulson, anything else you'd have to, you'd like to comment on or... You need some more clarification. Yes, I would feel more better about clarification from Chief Matson since our city administrator was not present during any of those meetings. Okay. Any further discussion? Mayor. Councilor Baraboo. Yeah. Um, now you both have me totally confused on this because we have not received this grant yet, correct? It comes from St. Louis County, correct? So why are we even worried about posting and doing stuff before we actually receive the grant? Is there a guarantee we're going to receive this grant? Because uh, yeah, I'm confused now. I thought these were two separate positions that uh, that uh, our police chief was talking about. They the are. grant for the grant for the opioid isn't that a full time position? No, it's part time. Correct. Well, eighteen months, but at forty hours a week, right? That's what I understood from this. Does anybody really know? Because the money I saw, there was a lot of money for for that uh, for that grant. We we need to find that out too. I don't know if that's was she talking about splitting these to a position between one individual? No, that's what I thought. It was a no. Okay, all right. I think so, maybe so let's, uh, let's maybe we need to table it then. I mean, I mean, I because I'm confused right now, Mayor, because of the uh, uh, and we still haven't received the grant from Saint Louis County. I'm assuming we're going to get it. But I, I would go along with the double posting if we're gonna if we're gonna post. But I don't think we should do this. At this point, do we find out if we get the grant? Well, if we don't get the grant, then the position is available and the posting is moot. Well, yeah, unless the union bitches about it. 
It's exempt position. Okay. It's exempt position. Then it makes a difference then. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'd rather, I'd rather have it uh, tabled right until we get clarification. Well, it's been moved and supported uh, to move forward. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Roll call, please. Paulson? No. Yandich? Johnson? Yes. Ferencelli? Yes. Tuffy? Yes. Caribou? No. Reedley? What's that? Passes. 4 3. 5 2? No. 5 to 2. Okay, thank you. Okay, motion passes 5 2. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to item 9.1 E. Approve the Memorandum of Understanding with Law Enforcement Labor Services for a special assignment wage of 4% increase over the base salary for the position of Community Relations Officer. And I think if you recall in our discussions last Tuesday, this Community Relations Officer is going to consist of some code, of, code enforcement with our the various code officials within the department, as well as being the, uh, the uh, Community Resource Officer for the school as well. Uh, move that from a part-time position uh, which was their officer to a 40-hour full-time position uh, and uh, with a, uh, a wage increase of 4% during the time that uh, they're serving uh, under this capacity. And I believe the clarification from Chief Batson was this wage would continue on even upon completion of that assignment uh, because of the extra duties and responsibilities and, uh, and uh, elevated uh, knowledge and uh, expertise in, in this area moving forward. So that's what it says uh, in, in the Memorandum of Understanding, and it was moved and supported at committee level to approve this. Do I have a motion from the council? Councilor uh, Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. I will motion that we approve the Memorandum of Understanding with LELS -E for the special assignments wage of 4% increase over the base pay for the position of community relations officer. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Johnson uh, makes the motion to approve. Is there support for that? Support by Councilor Friedlieb. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 9.1F, approve the memorandum of understanding for Kaylee Fellows for the dual role firefighter paramedic uh, in accordance with the International Association of Firefighters Local 390. And if you recall, uh, she doesn't quite have her, um, her, her uh, training in. Uh, I think she has a couple of months left, but they wanted to make this appointment uh, 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 moving forward. They, they have no other applicants and it's an internal, uh, I think we're doing this memorandum, I was saying it's, uh, but there's just one position, so thank you. I would move. Moved forward to approve by Councilor Freely. Is there support? Support by Councilor Barnzelli. Is there any further discussion? Councilor Baraboo. Uh, shouldn't the motion be contingent on her passing and finishing her uh, education on this? Because otherwise, if she fails, then we're stuck. Already done. Well, I just found out, uh, unbeknownst to us, she's already finished. Oh, I didn't know that either. Well, I didn't know that till just now either. So. <laughs> Okay, so if she's finished, I have no issue with it now. <laughs> okay, so is it necessary to even approve this then? Yes, it is. She does have to pass her CPAP, which will be oh, scheduled she has to do the for C May. She has to do the CPAP. Thing, she is so. a firefighter one and two. She's and a firefighter one and two and a paramedic, and she has to pass her CPAP. Uh, yeah, so. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bear. But thank you for the clarification, uh, uh, Pam and Cherry. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 9.1G, approve the purchase of KSB mixer from Quality Flow Systems in the amount of $12,759 and replace the belt for $2,244.39 as recommended by People's Service for normal maintenance at the wastewater treatment plant and to purchase the belt immediately. That was moved and supported at committee level. So move. Moved by Councilor Johnson to approve is their support. Support by Councilor Freely. Is there any further discussion? S 
Sorry, Councillor uh, Johnson. Thank you. And just to clarify, it's actually cheaper to buy a new one at this point than to get the old one fixed. And so that's why we're going with this option. Yep, yep. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item 9.1H. Direct the city attorney to present the counter offer to essential health consistent with the discussion held in a closed session. So moved. Moved by Councilor Johnson. Is there support? Support by Councilor uh, Boyandich. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And finally, item 9.1I. Uh, didn't uh, moved in uh, committee level to deny the approval of the proposed chicken ordinance that was presented by Planning and Zoning Commission last meeting. Moved by Councilor Freelieb. Is there support? Sure. Support by Councilor Baerbo. Is there any further discussion? Councilor Johnson. I'm not comfortable with the way this whole thing played out. Um, I would honestly prefer that we be able to finish our discussion at the committee level about the ordinance instead of just dropping it. Um, the um, planning and zoning didn't recommend, did recommend it. And um, I, I feel like we need to still do our diligence on it um, because it's going to come up again. Um, and it may be a couple more years or it may be a couple more months, but the work's already been done. And I would prefer to either vote yes or no on a ordinance that we've all talked about um, and that we have um, had our questions answered instead of just dropping it. Okay, thank you. Is any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Roll call, please. Johnson? No. Princelli? Yes. Alfie? Aye. Caribou? Aye. Friedlieb? Paulson? Aye. Motion carries, five to two. Thank you. Now that concludes the uh, committee report. Move on to item 10, commission liaison department head reports. Does any city council or have a, a, a report that they'd like to give this evening? Councilor Baerbo. Uh, thank you, Mayor and fellow councilors. Uh, last night, the Public Utilities uh, Commission met, and I am liaison to that uh, commission, so I'll give you a quick, uh, short report here. They had an election of officers. The new president of the Public Utilities Commission is Jeff Marwick. The vice president is uh, Bruce Johnson, and the secretary is Jim Petrosky. Uh, they are going to be changing uh, their uh, meeting times from 4.30 uh, back to 3.30, and that, that will be uh, standard now. They had uh, one commission member that couldn't meet at 3.30 during the winter months because his job, he's no longer on the commission, so they're going back to their 3.30 time frame. Um, they had a monthly injury report. There were no in injuries in, Dece in December. They do have a carpal tunnel uh, out right now, but it'll, it'll follow up in the next month's uh, uh, follow-up uh, injury report. Um, they're installing, or they will be installing, two new boilers that they call pony boilers. They're the smaller um, boilers that they're going to be utilizing once all the conversion is done. They uh, approved design and, and um, build uh, by um, uh, Grazina. Um, the G GWDS uh, 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 firm here for design. And the uh, uh, build portion is going to be done by uh, SEH as the lead engineer on the, on the build. It's a total of uh, $1.8 million for the two boilers. Uh, the cost of, for these two is 10%, $180,000, which will be split up however they need to split it. So the um, question was asked if they need to go out for bids, and they were told no because it's professional services, both of those, and they can go up to $100,000 each. So the two together don't match that, so they're okay there. Um, 
They talked about the school districts, um, and right now they don't have a formal lies to, uh, uh, with the new school districts, with the elementaries and the uh, uh, new high school, where all the power and where all the gas and everything, they're working on that. They know a couple things. The power for the elementary school in Eveth will come from Minnesota Power. The water and sewer will come from Eveth also for that facility. Uh, the high school, the power and the electric, uh, the power and the, and the gas will come from the Virginia side for the high school. They're not certain on the uh, on the sewage at this point. Um, they approved a retirement. Um, the, and that was that then they had a couple of travel requests uh, for alignment and this is the same thing that we do that's for upgrading their uh, education levels that they have to do to be in alignment, et cetera. Um, they have uh, some new distributed uh, solar generation uh, from private parties, natural harvest, new uh, 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 county building. Uh, so those are, are uh, new solar updates that they have to provide a report to to the state once a year. And it includes all the past ones too, so they have them there by date. That's a state requirement. Um, they ran uh, the number 11 and number seven uh, coal, uh, number 11 is the biomass boiler and the number seven is a coal, coal boiler. And those were run through the uh, uh, winter months. And they said they had a couple more water breaks, but nothing severe this winter. So uh, that's my report. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Councilor Berbu. Anybody else would like to make a report before we move on to our department heads, Councilor Barnsley? Thank you, Mayor. Councilor Barabu, who, uh, who was going around town putting up those bright lights? They're down every avenue and street. Was that the city, what we what we agreed on last that's the, that's year? That's the Amoresco. That's the Amoresco Energy Project. Yeah, and they're they're working pretty diligently. I've oh, seen yeah. them all over town uh, working. All we got, over. We've got more than one crew doing this, too, so it's it's going fast. They, they worked well. Yeah, they, they were doing a lot of work. So uh, I've seen them all over town, too, man. Uh, Councilor Barnzelli. Okay, thank you. Um, anything else from the council? They will go to department heads reports. Um, Sherry, do you have anything you'd like to report? Okay, Pam. Yes, I just wanted to let the public know that we will be open Saturday from ten to three for absentee voting. If anyone would like. Okay, absentee voting open at City Hall from ten a.m. to three p.m. this Saturday. Yes, and March third. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Miners. And that's with the new polling place yes, from all the, the precincts will be voting in at the, the miners. miners. Okay. Oh yeah, all precincts at the Miners. Okay, thank you. Um, just a reminder: tonight's precinct caucuses. Yeah, we have to be out of here by six o'clock. Looks like we're going to make that. Uh, I have a couple items I'd like to bring up. Uh, first of all, Brian, do you have anything uh, you need uh, to address the council for? Uh, no, no formal report, Mayor. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, just be prepared for March 3rd. We have a committee of the whole meeting. It's gonna be rather lengthy. Uh, as It'll go into the afternoon, most likely. Uh, uh, we'll be providing lunch for everybody uh, for that meeting. We have a lot of items on the agenda that uh, we need to address. And one of them is the um, environmental issue uh, up at by the golf course. That's gonna be a significant presentation and other things moving forward. So take a look at your agenda packet from March the 3rd, and please be prepared for a, a rather lengthy meeting. Uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m., uh, I will be uh, in an interview at the Northeast Tech Building, uh, Northeast Co-op with, with Rams Director Steve Georgie and some elected officials. Uh, Politico is going to be there interviewing uh, some of the elected officials, the mayors on on mining in, in Minnesota and how this is affecting, uh, you know, the, the the election and all those kind of things. I don't know what specific questions he's going to be asking a reporter from Political, but I did get an email from C. George asking to come there. So I'll be there tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And then on Friday, there is a conference call. Uh, I think it's be right around 30 or so uh, with the DNR on the SR Steel project. So. Uh, this is, I think, the second or the third um, uh, conference call with respect to SR moving forward. So we hope to have some more information for you about how that process is moving forward in the permitting uh, uh, regarding that uh, particular mining operation over to the west of us. And uh, 
you know, the, the, the state has until the end of the year in order to determine what they're going to do with those leases. So we'll get some more information update for all of you uh, uh, on the council and those of you who are listening at home about that. And then the final thing is that the state, is, the, the state of the city report is finally done. I'm going to be sending a copy uh, to all of you ahead of time to take a look at it. And then I, uh, we, we plan as a, as a city, as a council and the mayor and all the staff to roll out uh, the city the address through uh, public access, uh, through e electronic uh, and any other media sources we have. And so uh, we'll have that available by the end of the week. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> Uh, Councilor Bearable. Just uh, one thing, if you're not going to be at that um, uh, Metallics uh, call, I will be there as Vice President of RAM, so I will be on that call. I'll bring back a report unless you're going to be there also. No, you can make, we're happy to do the report, but I'll be there as well. Okay. Yep, thank you very but much. But I will take notes and, and bring back a report because I'm involved with those calls uh, also with RAMs. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councilor Bearable. Uh, Councilor Johnson. I apologize. I forgot earlier. Sure. Um, last Thursday night, the Friends of Public Safety has had a hugely successful um, spaghetti party, as my daughter called it. Um, my understanding is that the fire pup was there. Uh, Teddy was there with his person, Nick. And um, my understanding is they actually kind of ran out of some stuff, but uh, we don't have a total. But um, the money will be used to help support the fire department, the police department, the explorers, Teddy and Nick. Um, and I just can't thank the public enough for, for the huge number of people that showed up. It was a great event and all done by the Friends of Public Safety volunteers. Yeah, thank you. And I did get a report from Deb Judnick over at the fire hall that uh, there's a, a, the minimum uh, uh, revenue gleaned from that is over $4,000. So that was a successful event. Thank you very much, Councillor Johnson. Anything else that needs to come before the council uh, this evening? If not, we will stand adjourned uh, to Tuesday, March 10th, 2020 at the regular time of 5.30 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. We stand adjourned. <laughs>